Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. Today we're going to take another look at Dynamic Paint. Alright, um, so last time we had the intro, there's a few questions about how would you use that in like a an actual use case scenario, right? So what are some examples or what is an idea on what you can use Dynamic Paint for? So let's just go over one of the many examples and in this one I think it will be fun to create Perhaps a snowball rolling from a hill, right? Leaving a mark in the snow, perhaps getting bigger as well. We'll see where we end up, right? So what we can do first is create the um, the little hill, right? Of which is going to roll off. Um, so I'm going to delete my cube. Um, I'm sorry about it. And shift A, mesh. And we could just add... Let's just add a plane, right? Why not? There we go. And let's go to modifiers, add modifier, a subdivision, a service. There we go. And set this to like six. And let's just set this to simple and apply it with control A. Right. There we go. Then we can at least sculpt a little bit of detail. So I'm going to select my entire back edge by double clicking. Then I'm going to enable proportional editing by pressing O or the icon on top there. So press O. It will enable it. And we can set this to be sharp, perhaps. Let's see, press GZ, move it up, right? We are creating a little cool hill. There we go. Quite nice. And let's also just add a modifier search for displace. Hit new on the texture input. Go to the texture icon there and set this to be clouds. All right, then the size, just crank that up by a lot. So we have a little bit of variation, I, I guess. Depth could be one as well. So it's just a little bit of a uh, little bit of a weirdness there going on, a little bit of randomness. Um, all right, let's press S and Y, scale this up a little bit, like that, and <laughs> let's actually move this down a little bit once again, like so. Beautiful. Now, right mouse, shade smooth, and here at the top, press Shift the right mouse, and we can then place our three D cursor anywhere in the scene. And press shift a mesh and let's add a little sphere scale that down to about that size right mouse shade smooth right and move it up a little bit there we go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a little bit of a rigid body system out of this sphere that's gonna roll down that hill right so let's perhaps just um move this out a little bit so we have a little bit of room to roll or do whatever it wants Move that there. There we go. Now, in the physics tab, we can add a rigid body system. There we go. And I want this one to be active, which means it's going to be falling down quite, uh, quite fast, right? Um, and I want this to be dynamic, not animated. We don't want to do any animations. And the uh, collisions, a convex hull is quite fine. We can even change this to be a sphere, I guess. And um, that way it actually is exactly our sphere object and the rest of this doesn't really matter yet so click our surface add a rigid body as well but set this to be passive right and then it shoots all bounds <laughs> you see um, uh, so obviously it is not working properly yet because this is on the convex hull I'm gonna set this to be a mesh right and then usually it's gonna follow the shape much better right so you can see what's happening here Quite nice. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. That is our initial little step, right? Now, in my ball, I'm going to increase the friction a little bit um, because it's going too fast. So let's set this to two, perhaps. We can do the same thing for the ground. Set this to two. Let's see what happens if we play it now, right? So it, it's rolling a little bit more like a snowball would roll from a hill, I guess, okay? Um, looking quite nice. Looking quite nice. It's rolling off the edge. Yep, it is rolling off the edge. So let's move it a little bit more to the center. Something like that. Beautiful. So how do we now set up the dynamic paint system? Well, if we add a dynamic paint system to our canvas, right? And so we add a canvas here. You can see that we're getting a little bit of an issue here. So let's try to swap this around and see if that solves anything. It does not. All right, so that is just the limitation that we have to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate our ground. So this is going to be the ground a proxy. 
I guess, yes, ground proxy for the collision. And I'm going to duplicate this, and this is going to be ground underscore dynamic paint, right? So the ground proxy is just going to be there for the rigid body system, and the dynamic paint ground is there going to be the dynamic paint. So for the dynamic paint, let's remove the rigid body. And for the proxy, let's remove the dynamic paint, right? And then we can also just hide our proxy object, all right? Because we don't need it other than for the collision object, right? And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to move my ground proxy just down a tiny little bit in the Z. So GZ, something like that, because I want my snow... Uh, I want this object to indent a little bit in the snow, obviously, right? So that means that the collision object needs to be a little bit lower than the snow in order to make this ball actually indent the surface, right? So let's play this, right? You can already see it indenting a little bit, perhaps even a bit more, right? So GZ, move this down even more, something like that. Let's play this. There we go. That looks a lot better. So now for our top surface, we can actually add the dynamic paint system. Right, and we need a brush collection, so select our sphere and name this Snowball, F2 Snowball. Um, hello, I mistyped that. And press M, new collection, brush. There we go. Then in our ground dynamic paint, right, just hide the proxy. We don't need it anymore. We can actually set the brush collection to be our brush, right? There we go. Then the next step is to switch our dynamic paint canvas to be a uh, displace instead of a paint because we want to displace the mesh, the indent of the snowball is a mesh displacement. And then for our a sphere, we also want a dynamic paint system because remember, like I said in the intro, every dynamic paint system needs a canvas and a brush. Right, so the canvas is the thing that's gonna be the indented mesh, right? The thing that gets the effect, and the brush is gonna be the object that gives the effect, right? So the sphere, the snowball. So let's set this from a canvas to be a brush and add a brush, right? So let's play this now. So now you can see that we're actually getting an indentation in our snow, right? And isn't that just beautiful, right? So if you want more geometry, right, just select our plane. Go to the modifiers and let's just add a subdivision modifier subdivision and set that to be in the front there and render and viewport both to one should work right so now you can see we're getting some mesh indentation from a snowball oh isn't that cool so what we can do as well is select our sphere and go to the physics properties and we can actually go ahead and animate the scale. To do that, you can hover over the scale tab, right mouse, and insert keyframes, right? And then, for example, at frame 100, we can set this to be 0.15, a little bit bigger, right? Right mouse, insert keyframes. And then if we play this animation, all right, you can see the snowballs getting bigger over time, catching more snow, rolling down the hill in quite a beautiful manner. So right now, the snowball is rolling off the canvas, which is a little bit uh, not what we want, right? So what we're going to do is select our ground proxy and dynamic paint after we enable the eye and the render icon, right? Select both of them by holding shift, press tap to go to edit mode, and now select these two end corners, right? So select that one, hold shift, select the bottom one, and press GZ. We're going to move this up a little bit like that. All right, reason why, if we now go back to a solid view and hide our proxy mesh again, you can see that if we start this from the start, our snowball will roll downhill, there we go, and it will get caught up on that little mountain there and roll right back to the inside, right? So it will not actually roll off our mesh, okay? And that is exactly what we wanted, right? So now we have a actual canvas, a snow place, with a ball that is actually causing an indentation in the snow, right? And that is quite beautiful. So this is what it looks like with some snowy materials, I guess, right? And a nice sky texture. Um, if you want to know more about that, um, please let us know. And we will do a tutorial on creating procedural materials or setting up lighting, setting up the scene, stuff like that. 
Um, for this one though, I think the result is quite nice. It looks really nice rolling down the hill. You can see this animation looks quite nice, right? It really looks like a snowball falling down the hill. Rolling down the hill, I'd say. Right, so thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We will enjoy any one of those. And then we'll see you in the next one. Cheers!